Hello and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to be talking all about cholesterol and how to lower your cholesterol naturally without medication. So let me tell you first of all why, why I want to talk about this and why this is something that I feel comfortable talking about because so if I rewind five years or so, I, I had so many different health problems. So I was seeing, as, as I'm sure you can imagine, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if this is something you can relate to, but if you're watching this video, this is, probably, this is probably what your life has been like. So you go to see every different doctor, every different specialist, dietitians, nutritionists, all of these different types of ologists, and you don't, they, they, don't really, they don't really help you that much. But one thing that comes up is they say, oh, your, your cholesterol's high, we have to get it low. Wait, your cholesterol's high, we have to lower it. Here's a medication, here's a statin, here's some arbitrary dietary advice, doesn't really help very much, not very accurate. And you get kind of stuck because you're like, okay, well, I know I have a problem here. My cholesterol is high, this is a problem. And no one is giving me a solution. And this was really hard for me because I was in a place where I was already on a really restrictive diet. I was only eating about five or six different foods. And my cholesterol was five times above the upper limit of what the, what the national guidelines in the UK say is safe. So when I went to see my, my lipidologist, and he was actually one of the head lipidologists in England. So a lipidologist is somebody who looks at um, fats in the body, fat, fat levels, so things like cholesterol. And he left me with this terrifying statement of, you're not going to have a heart attack in five years. You're not going to have a heart attack in a year. You're going to have a heart attack any second. And if you don't take these two different types of statin medication, they wanted to put me on the highest dose oral medication they could and on an injection as well on top because my levels were so high. And he was basically saying, if you don't do this, you're going to have a heart attack any second. And that, as I said, that's five years ago. I never took any of the medication. I've I've done so much healing, my cholesterol levels are almost back to completely normal just through dietary lifestyle intervention. So you can do this too, but in order for us to, to do this, for me to help you understand how I achieved these awesome results and how you can do it too without medication, we have to talk a little bit about cholesterol because there's a lot we've got to talk about here. Don't let this scare you, okay? This, all ratios, big math stuff might look scary, it's not, okay? It's really almost stupidly simple. I'm just drawing it up here because the way that they talk about LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol is so, is so wrong. that It's, it's such a, a misinterpreted, misunderstood perspective on what's happening inside the body. So we have to talk about this before we can find natural solutions, but they do exist. I've done it. I've seen loads of other people do it as well. It's totally possible. So we're going to get to how to do this, but we have to understand cholesterol a little bit more first. So we're going to dive into that. Cholesterol. What is it? So first of all, we have to look at what the functions of cholesterol are. Once we can start to understand the functions, once we understand what cholesterol is and what it does, we start to learn a little bit more about why it can be high and what, what these different blood levels actually mean. So let's look at the functions. So the two most important for, for now that we're going to look at are it's its um, activity as an antioxidant and as an, in, as an anti-inflammatory. So if you have any kind of inflammation or reactive oxygen damage in your body, you will have high cholesterol and you want to have higher cholesterol because it is an adaptive response that keeps you alive, that keeps you healthy. So I'm going to use an analogy here. I want you to imagine your body is a house and whenever you have inflammation, the house is on fire. And you can see the root, of the, the root of the words is the same. Inflammation, flame, on fire. And that's what, exactly what's happening inside your body. It's on fire. So as your body is really smart and it has protective, defensive mechanisms to keep it functioning, healthy and safe, it has its own fire service. And this is cholesterol. So when your body has inflammation, the fire alarm goes off, the smoke alarms are, are ringing and and the body's like, oh my God, there's a fire. Let's try to put that out because if we stay on fire, we will die. So this is, this is all happening and the, the fire department responds. This is your liver. Your liver's like, oh my God, we've got loads of inflammation. Let's create loads of cholesterol and send it to, the, to where the fire is. And the, the cholesterol is like the firefighters. So they, they, they come out, they go to where the inflammation is and they, they calm the fire down. They act as an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory and calm down this inflammation. So you can see here how 
Having high cholesterol is a bad thing, but not because cholesterol itself is bad. The reason that having high cholesterol is bad is because you have high inflammation and the cholesterol is the adaptive response. So here we've got, what, what is healthy is, so this, this red line here, this little red line here on this graph indicates your inflammation. So what you want to happen is as your inflammation is climbing, you also want your cholesterol to be climbing directly correlated to that. The more inflammation you have, the more cholesterol you want. The bigger the fire in your house, the more firefighters you want going there to put the fire out. Otherwise, your house is being destroyed. That is your body. That is your body becoming chronically ill. That's your body developing a chronic health problem. So what happens is with mainstream, we see, okay, with people that are correlated with having higher levels of cholesterol in their body, they get different types of diseases like coronary heart disease and all of these other things that are associated with high cholesterol. However, the problem is not the cholesterol. The problem is the inflammation. So when you go after the cholesterol instead of the inflammation, not only does this, this fire just continue burning your body and destroying it, and that's what causes the, all of these, these types of health problems, you've now turned off your adaptive response. You've now made it so that your body, in its wisdom, likes to produce cholesterol. It makes cholesterol itself. Even if all you ate was the most cholesterol-rich foods, so literally all you ate was like egg yolks, caviar, all of that stuff, even if that's all you ate and you had low levels of inflammation in your body, that would all of that dietary intake would only account for about 20 to 30% of, of cholesterol that your body needs in a day. So even if you eat a low cholesterol diet, even if you eat a high cholesterol diet, your body still produces more. So that doesn't really make much of a difference. Your liver is smart. Your body is intelligent and it knows we have this problem, we have this fire, we need to put it out. And when you take a medication that stops your body from being able to produce cholesterol, so this is what statin medications do. They disrupt one of the enzyme pathways in the liver that helps, that enables the body to turn um, saturated fat into cholesterol. So turning saturated fat, again, another demonized thing that's actually completely normal, very healthy, required. As you can see, it's really important because we make cholesterol out of saturated fat. So when we take a statin, we, we basically stop the body's ability to convert saturated fat into cholesterol, which means the body can't produce as much. And then what happens here is as your inflammation is rising, your cholesterol output, so this blue one is unhealthy. So this is what happens when you take a medication, for example, and you suppress cholesterol production using a medication instead of removing the source of the need for the increased cholesterol, which is inflammation. What happens here is now your body has an increased demand because it has high inflammation, but you're stopping the body from being able to produce it. So when this happens, not only does this fire not get put out, which leads to all kinds of different types of chronic degenerative diseases, but all of the other functions that cholesterol has in the body also get suppressed. So some of the other functions are cholesterol is a precursor. So a precursor means it's like an ingredient. So think about, say you're making a cake, maybe you're making some bread. You have ingredients that go in to make the final product. And one of the biggest ones is like flour, for example. So in this case, in this recipe, to make vitamin D, to make all of your hormones, this is testosterone, this is estrogen, this is all of your stress hormones like cortisol, this is everything. All of these, the, the big backbone, the primary ingredient that makes these things is cholesterol. And down here we've got myelin. So this, I'm using this as the example because this is the highest density tissue in the body. But every single cell inside your body, so this includes skin cells, this includes in your gut, this includes in your liver, this is every single cell in your body is made out of cholesterol. It has a large percentage of cholesterol. So if this is happening here, and you're now, so you have inflammation, your body's raising cholesterol, especially LDL cholesterol, and we're gonna talk about that just down here. It's raising your cholesterol levels. This is the, the bad cholesterol, right? This is what they say is bad. So your body is trying to adapt to all this inflammation that it's being exposed to. Well, if you suppress the natural production, your body has to reprioritize what it does with the limited amount of cholesterol that it has. So all of these other functions, your vitamin D, so your body turns cholesterol into vitamin D. It can't give the, that, that process the cholesterol that it needs, so your vitamin D levels come low. It can't send as much cholesterol to your adrenal glands. So now you can't make um, all of your stress hormones, you can't make estrogen, you can't make testosterone, and then you're having problems with all of this, you get into complete dysfunction with your, with your hormones. And then finally, the ho all the rest of your body. So if you've got chronic inflammation happening, so you've got this inflammation coming up really high, all the cells in your body are being destroyed at a faster rate. 
and your body needs cholesterol to rebuild them and it doesn't have enough. So what happens? The cells stop getting replaced properly and you see this the, the most, you'll see this observed the most in the cells that have the most myelin, the most, this is the most um, fatty tissue that we have in our body, the, the, the place where we have the most cholesterol. So this is in your brain cells and in your nervous system. And in your brain, so if you took your brain and you took all of the water out, and then you measured what was there when you've removed the water, 40% of your brain is cholesterol, 40%. So it's like nearly half of your brain is made out of cholesterol. So if your body is running out of cholesterol, where do you think the first place it's gonna take cholesterol from is? It's your brain. So your brain, your body stops sending so much cholesterol to your brain and it reroutes, it redirects all of the cholesterol that it's producing to inflammation to try to keep you alive. But what happens? Well, your brain starts to degenerate. You can develop multiple sclerosis. You can develop um, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. These are two of the most common side effects of statins. And that makes so much sense when you consider the fact that when the body runs out of cholesterol, it stops sending it to, to the brain, to the nervous system, to the steroid and stress hormones, to vitamin D production, and tries to send as much of it as it can to inflammation. So with all of that in mind, the, the question becomes, okay, so why do we have so much inflammation? And we're gonna to get to that. We're gonna talk about that down here. But first we have to understand cholesterol and lab markers. And if you've got high cholesterol, or if your doctors have been scaring you and saying things like you're gonna die, like they did to me, um, once you understand this, it's gonna completely d dissolve all of that fear. So first of all, we have to look at what LDL and HDL are. So these are, these are, these are, these are basically acronyms for low density, lipoprotein and high density lipoprotein. So they, these are basically the same thing, right? They're both lipoproteins, they just have different densities. And all that means is one of them has a higher ratio of fat to protein and the other one has a lower ratio of fat to protein. So the way that you can look at this is both of these, so these are both lipoproteins, these are actually the same lipoprotein. So they're like this little truck, okay? So you, I know this is awful drawing, but, but whatever, I'm, I'm working on my art skills. So you've got two trucks here. They're both the same. Look at the parts of the truck that are black, okay? You've got the wheels, you've got the, the chassis on the bottom, you've got this front part where the, where the driver is. Both of those have the same weight on, on both trucks. In a low density lipoprotein, you've, you can see this is loaded up with this green stuff. This, this green stuff here is cholesterol. So the reason that your body does this is your body can't just send cholesterol wherever it wants because it's it's really, it's really fatty, it's really, um, it's hydrophobic, which means it doesn't dissolve in your blood very well. So for your body to send cholesterol to where it's needed, so imagine your body's on fire, your body's just sent all of the cholesterol there, so it's sent a truck full of firefighters to put it all out. Great, okay, it's fine, there's no flames going on there, the fire's been put out, but the building is destroyed. So we need to send new building materials to the site of damage so we can build the building back up so we can repair your body. And your body does this by taking this lipoprotein, so this little truck, this little car, and it just fills it up with cholesterol so that it can deliver all of this cholesterol to the place where all of the inflammation was. Your body uses this truck, so it uses this truck to take cholesterol to, it, it's what carries the firefighters to put the fire out, it carries the building materials to put everything back together to give the, the construction site the resources it needs to rebuild your body that's been damaged. It does this to carry the, the cholesterol to your skin so you can make vitamin D when you're exposed to the sun. It sends this, um, this cholesterol to your adrenal glands so you can make all of, your, all of your hormones there. It sends them to your ovaries, to your testicles so you can make different hormones there. And it sends them to all of the different cells in your body everywhere. Every single cell is made out of cholesterol and it needs cholesterol to function. So it's really important that we have this truck to be able to send all of the cholesterol to the body so that it can do the jobs that it needs to do. So this truck goes to the site, it drops all of the cholesterol off. And now it becomes, so it, it turns from LDL, so it's got a high ratio of, of fat and a low ratio of protein. This truck is like protein. And this, the, the, what it's carrying is the fat, it's the cholesterol. So it goes to the construction site and it's really heavy. It's full of, it's, it's full of fat, it's full of cholesterol. So the truck, the, the weight of the actual truck itself is way less heavy than the weight of all of the cholesterol that it's carrying on its back. So it goes to the construction site, it goes to the adrenal glands, the testicles, it drops all of this off 
and now it looks like this. So it's, it's really small, it's really light. And the amount of weight that the, the truck takes up is about the same as, the, as what it's carrying on the back. And what's happening here is now this construction site has, has been given its resources, it's been given everything that it needs. There's a lot of like broken compounds like cholesterol that's been oxidized. So this is cholesterol that's been sent there and it's worked as an antioxidant. It's bound to these reactive oxygen species. You can imagine it's like this, this, this building that's burnt down, it's gone there and it's cleaned all of the, the ash and the soot and all of the, the smoke and it's cleaned all of that up and it's now packaged that in cholesterol. Again, cholesterol is super important. And this truck now is gonna come back to the liver. So it's gonna deliver all of this oxidized cholesterol. It, maybe it's still carrying a little bit of cholesterol as well, but it's basically coming back to the liver so that it can offload all of this damaged cholesterol, all of these reactive oxygen species, all of these toxins. And then the liver is gonna take this, it's going to scrub it clean, it's gonna package up all of this toxicity, all of this ash and soot, and it's gonna put that in the bile and then that will get flushed out through the digestive system. And then the truck is, is empty again, and it can be loaded back up with cholesterol and sent back off to do the same job, exactly the same way that trucks are used to deliver things. So both of these are the same thing. They're just a, a different part in the process. And having a really high level of LDL cholesterol just means your body needs to rebuild itself. It means it has lots of inflammation. It means it needs lots of firefighters. It means it needs lots of building materials. If you're really stressed, you're going to need to produce more stress hormones. So you're going to need to have higher cholesterol because your body is delivering this cholesterol to the place where it's turned into the hormones or where it's made into new cells. So when we lower LDL cholesterol by taking a medication, we stop your body being able to produce all of, these, all of this green stuff, all of this cholesterol, all of these firefighters, all of these building materials, all of these really important things that your body needs to function. And you'll get to a certain point here where your body needs more than you're providing it. And when you, when you cross that line, you will start to feel awful. You will start to feel really bad. And that's because your body cannot function anymore. It's not able to adapt to the stressful environment that it's currently in. So what is the solution here? Well, first of all, these things, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Your body's smart, don't question it. It knows what it's doing. If you have high cholesterol, you have high cholesterol for a reason. Your body's trying to keep you alive. But what we need to figure out is why do you have high cholesterol and how do we lower it without suppressing the body's function? So if you suppress the body's function with the medication, the inflammation is still present. All of the jobs that it needs to do are still, it still needs to be done. Now they're just not being done. So great, yippee, your cholesterol is low, but you're still gonna feel awful. You're still gonna develop chronic illness. You're not gonna feel very good. And it's just gonna be a downhill slope from there. So doing it that way doesn't make any sense. So instead we need to figure out why does your body need so much cholesterol? So we need to reduce the demand. So how do we do that? Well, we look at all of the jobs that the that cholesterol has in the body. So it, it's, its functions are to stimulate immune function. It's used in cell repair. It's used in, in inflammation. It cools inflammation. Anytime you're stressed, as I said, your body sends cholesterol to your adrenal glands to produce stress hormones. So if you have an increased demand for cholesterol, your cholesterol levels will be high. So we need to figure out what is the root cause of the demand for the cholesterol and lower it. And this is gonna look different for everybody. For me, I'll give you my example. So for me, I, was I, was, I had lots of emotional stress and mental stress, but the biggest thing was I was exposed to a lot of chemical toxicity. So I was exposed to mold and mycotoxins. And your body's adaptive response is to raise your cholesterol levels to five times higher than, than, than what a safe limit would be. And for a normal person in a healthy environment where they're not exposed to toxins, yes, that may be true, that a healthy amount is five times lower than mine was. But in the environment that I was in, having five times higher cholesterol than the safe limit was the best thing that my body could do to keep me as functional in the environment that I was in. So it's a good thing that my cholesterol levels were high because I needed the cholesterol. But that's, that's the whole point. As soon as I was able to relocate, as soon as I was able to support my body, once I reduced the amount of work my immune system had to do, once I repaired much of the cell damage that my, that my body had, once I calmed down this inflammatory process that was happening inside my body, and once I reduced my stress, the need for cholesterol is lower. So your body stops producing it. It's really that simple. So we have to ask the question, why does your body need so much cholesterol? So let's take a look. If you have chronic or acute infections, you're going to need more cholesterol. So 
If you get a cold, if you get the flu, you are going to have a higher cholesterol. So if you tested your cholesterol just before you got ill, it's going to be higher because your body's fighting infection. If you have chronic infections, your, bod your body is losing resources to parasites, to viruses, so your body needs to rebuild itself. If you have any kind of toxicity in your environment, toxicity causes damage to the mitochondria, which causes damage to the cell. This needs to be repaired. If it doesn't get repaired, you die. So you need to make sure it's being repaired, which means you need more cholesterol. So if we can remove this source of toxicity from your environment, this could be mycotoxins, this could be any types of heavy metals that you might be exposed to, this could be pollutants in your food, so this could be toxins like glyphosate, this could be plastics. Even wearing clothes, like this has a bit of elastic in it, right? This elastic is, is probably not natural. I mean, it's mostly cotton, but it's bleached, right? So there's some bleach coming in. So you don't have to do everything perfectly, but you just have to be really aware of how your body is constantly being assaulted by pollutants in the environment. You have to avoid what you can. So this could be fragrances. This could be deodorants that have aluminium in. This could be toothpaste that has fluoride in. There's so much toxicity in the environment. If you can remove a lot of that, your body doesn't need to process it anymore. Your cholesterol levels will come down. It will come down by itself. If you have a lot of cell damage, so if you have several or even one severe chronic health problem, chronic fatigue syndrome, adrenal dysfunction, multiple sclerosis, any type of problem that requires a lot of cell turnover, your, your body's trying to repair itself, you want your cholesterol to be high because it needs, it needs that. But once the cells are repaired, once the cells have fixed themselves, they don't, you don't need to have high cholesterol anymore and the cholesterol levels come down. If you do something really stressful, if you run a marathon, if you have an injury, like I sprained my, I, I injured my wrist quite badly, I'll bet you if I measured my cholesterol the day after the injury, it would have been two or three times higher what it normally is. Because your body's smart and it says, oh, we've damaged something, like let's send the firefighters to put out the inflammation and let's send the builders and all the building materials to rebuild that, that damage. And if you don't allow your body to do that, you will have slow recovery. You won't heal from, from wounds. They will, they will persist or you'll keep having chronic injuries because your body just doesn't have the building blocks that it needs to repair itself. If you're stressed all of the time, your body is just gonna be producing stress hormones like crazy. All of your stress hormones are made out of cholesterol. So if you have hormone imbalances, your cholesterol levels are also gonna be imbalanced because cholesterol is the precursor to all of your hormones. This can be one of the reasons that your hormones are imbalanced. If you don't have enough cholesterol, your body simply cannot produce enough stress hormones. And good luck healing from that because you, you, you're starving your body of the resources that it needs to be able to rebuild itself. That's not health. Health is providing an abundant amount of resources, all of the cholesterol that it could ask for, and saying, there you go, you have everything you need, you get to work. And your body's smart, it knows how to do this stuff. It knows how to work. So the biggest sources of inflammation are, are things like toxicity, so environmental, food. Um, hydrogenated vegetable oils are a huge one. So this is like canola and soybean oil, especially if they've been cooked, the food has been cooked in them over and over and over and over again. So this is things like fast food. This is things that have been deep fried. Doesn't mean never have it, just means understand the toll that it takes on your body. And when, as an adaptive response, it increases its cholesterol, don't be surprised, thank it, don't suppress it with the medication because it's trying to save you. So some other sources of, of, of stress for your body would be nutritional deficiencies or having too much uh, refined food in the diet, so like refined carbohydrates, too much can be stressful for the body. I'm not saying don't eat bread. I eat probably more bread than most people watching this video. And it's okay because your body is smart, it's adaptive, it knows how to do the best with what you give it. But when you see on a test that your levels have changed, don't be surprised, but that's your body adapting, that's body, your body giving you the best life that you possibly could in the environment that you're, you're living in, eating the diet that you're eating, being exposed to the toxins you're exposed to, thinking the thoughts that you think and believing the things that you believe. So it's all about it being an adaptive response. And if you repress or suppress or disable the adaptive response, you will feel worse for it. Health is working with your body, not trying to force it to do something because it doesn't look right on a test. Your body is so much smarter than lab tests. It's so much smarter than your doctors. It's so much smarter than me. I say this over and over and over again with my clients. We try stuff, right? And we see how your body responds. That's where the magic happens. It's based on what your body says from what we try. So your body's symptoms are clues. It's asking for help. We can provide the help based on what we think is the right option. Sometimes the body says no, and we listen. 
it's not about having an ego here. It's not about being arrogant and saying, I'm smarter than the body. I know more than the body does. Your body's always doing the right thing. You just have to ask the question and figure out why, change the circumstance, change the environment, and your body's response will change. So take it a step further, look a little bit deeper, figure out why do you have, why do you have an increased need for antioxidants? Why do you have an increased need for anti-inflammatories? Why do you have an increased need for vitamin D? So if you've got chronic infections, your vitamin D levels, you need more vitamin D to keep those things uh, in control. Why do you have increased need for stress hormones? Are you stressed all the time? Do you have hormone imbalances? Do you have PCOS? Do you have low testosterone? You need higher cholesterol in all of these circumstances. Is your body really destroyed? Are you recovering from MS, from Parkinson's, from Alzheimer's, from some kind of chronic, chronic degenerative illness? You need more cholesterol to do it. So ask the question, why is this smart response? Don't try to suppress it with medication. Help the body do what it's trying to do and the cholesterol levels will come down by themselves. I tell you this to give you some hope and to actually find solutions because I knew taking medication wasn't the right option for me. I mean, what 20 year old that has five times higher level cholesterol than the normal is supposed to, you're not supposed to be on medication at 20. You're just not, I'm, that's just not a, that's not a life that I subscribe to. And through following this and, and, and looking at it through this lens, I've actually found solutions and I'm sure you can do it too. And I know I said I was 20, even if you're 40, even if you're 50, you st I, still, I still truly believe your body is smart and maybe it needs medication for support. I'm not saying stop taking your meds. I'm not a doctor, so talk with your doctor about it. But ask these questions and dig a little bit deeper because I tell you that's where the results are. That's where I found them, that's where I see them. So do a little bit more digging. That's gonna be everything for today. If you do have any questions after this, please reach out and let me know. Um, leave them as a comment or send me a message. I definitely prefer if you leave a comment because then I can answer it publicly because if you ask the question after watching this, I'll bet you hundreds of other people that watch this video also have the same question. So if you, are, if you post it as a comment, not only do you help yourself, you help me because I help all of those other people too. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll see you soon. Ciao.